Hey everybody, this is Calvet Cody. Uh, we are in the thick of branding season, so I just wanted to do a little talk on that. So branding season is really just a, another name for calf hood processing. So like giving them their vaccinations, uh, castration and time, hot iron branding, where we get the name from, growth promotants, sometimes dewormers, all of those things that we do to baby calves before they get turned out onto their summer pasture. And because we're in the thick of branding, I just thought I would say a few words on it. Most Mostly in regards to the vaccination but also some of the processing as well so during branding time these cattle are typically six to eight weeks of age sometimes there's some outliers for sure the the later calves that are a little bit too young the reason that we wait to, to six to eight weeks is we're waiting for that passive immunity that colostral immunity that those calves get from their mom the first time that they suck where they have all of mom's antibodies absorbed into their gut and that is their passive immunity and it takes a little while for that passive immunity immunity to wane and for their own innate immunity to start to increase their own ability to process antigens and mount an immune response. So if we were to vaccinate calves at birth with a typical modified live or even a killed an injectable vaccine, what happens is mom's antibodies will neutralize those vaccines and will not mount an immune response. So we wait. So the, the eight weeks is kind of a sweet spot, but each individual colostral antibody has its own different half-life so we have protection for only a specific amount of time for each one so the the colostral antibodies for bvd are going to last differently than they would for brsv or pi3 so it really is very dependent and there's even evidence out there that mom's immunity lasts a lot longer than what's conventionally thought and even there is potentially still some continued immunity from the mom's milk right throughout until weaning time and some of the parenteral or injectable vaccines that we're given may not be as effective as we'd like but that said we still typically like to vaccinate in that age range and we wait so they will mount an immune response or is the best immune response that we can there's a few different classes of vaccines that we use typically a modern modified live so this is a, a virus that is modified and can replicate in the body and mount an immune response that way without causing clinical disease and then there's also the killed vaccines as well they could be killed virals or killed bacterials so what is most common at least in western canada in my practice area would be to use a five-way modified live injectable so something that protects against both types of bvd ibr pi3 and brsv and on top of that, a lot of times we also like to recommend a add-on using the Manheimia Bactrin. So this is a bacteria, the shipping fever bacteria that we're providing a vaccination against as well. So that would be in products like, say, Bovashield Gold One Shot. That would have the five modified live viruses, including the Manheimia Bactrin as well. Or another product, uh, for example, would be Pyramid Plus Prespons. There's also some products out there that also have an add-on of Pastorella maltosida, another one of the shipping fever bacteria uh, that's an add-on. In my practice area, the maltosida, we don't use that often, but in certain circumstances, we absolutely do, where we've diagnosed uh, diseases out on pasture uh, that are related to that bacteria. Uh, the other vaccine that we also use very commonly is an eight-way or a seven-way against the clostridials. So clostridials are soil organisms and those calves can pick them up in their gut. They can seed uh, throughout the body and cause pretty nasty diseases. The, the immunity protection of clostridials is very, very good when we use those vaccines. And very commonly what we'll do is do an add-on to that with Histophilus somni. So an eight-way or a seven-way Way with Histophilus somni protection and Histophilus is another bacteria that can cause some significant diseases in baby calves. Uh, the only other vaccine that we typically will add on is if guys are doing band castration right at branding time. So these are in older calves. Those calves need to be protected against tetanus as well. They can get tetanus and, and we need to switch things up so we'll move to an eight way that has tetanus included. There's also a, a range of of intranasal vaccines that are out there as well and producers are giving those both at birth or at uh, branding time or both the, the nice thing about the intranasal vaccines is they actually do not negatively respond to the passive immunity from mom's colostrum. It's a local response, the shot up in the nose. So that is typically not uh, not a concern. We can give that almost at, at any age. Uh, there definitely is some exceptions. It is an extra step for sure, uh, guys having to give that intranasal at branding time. But in situations where the regular vaccines do not seem 
seem to provide enough protection, uh, we can give that as well. So there is an intranasal against IBR, PI3, and BRSV, so a, a viral um, intranasal vaccine. And then there's also intranasals against Mannheimia and Pasteurella as well, those two bacteria that can cause shipping fever. So that's it on the vaccination side. So you absolutely have to talk to your veterinarian in terms of your risk level and what's appropriate for your individual herds. That's just what is most common. Uh, so two needles covering a wide range of viruses, bacteria, uh, and clostridial bacteria as well. After that, it really just depends on the farmer's management style. So whether or not those calves are getting castrated or dehorned, if, if that's a, a needed thing. A lot of times the add-on is a painkiller. One of the most common ones would be meloxicam. This is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory that would provide uh, pain relief for about three days after we do one of those painful events. The hot iron branding, definitely something that is a point of contention in terms of animal welfare. Unfortunately, hot iron branding is still the most surefire, no pun intended, is the most surefire way for us to do permanent identification. So tags can be cut out, uh, even radio frequency tags, they can be cut out as well. There isn't a lot of options out there for cattle that are being mixed, that are going out to, to places where cattle rustling, yes, that's a real thing, still a very, very real thing, where cattle rustling is common. So we in, at times need to, to do hot iron branding in order to provide uh, security to those animals and protect the farmer's investment. There is other options available such as tattooing. Uh, it is more time intensive and also freeze branding more time intensive. A regular hot iron brand would take about two seconds to apply whereas a freeze brand takes around 40 to 50 seconds depending on how thick that animal's hide is. So that, that definitely is an option but uh, a huge time constraint uh, when it comes to running large groups of animals. Next up comes growth promotant implants. So growth promotants uh, in the steer calves and then sometimes even in the heifer calves can provide a very good return on investment. So these calves are given a very weak dose of a hormonal implant into their ear and this allows them to convert more efficiently. Typically what we say is a 40 to 1 return on investment. So every dollar you spend on an implant you can be provided with $40 in return in terms of weaning weight. So depending on your situation, it may be an, an appropriate route to go. Uh, once again, controversial in some countries, but in terms of food safety, there is absolutely no adverse effects. When you use hormones in replacement heifers, however, so, so these are heifers at branding time that you're going to be potentially keeping back, uh, using these hormonal implants at times can cause a decrease in conception rate when those animals are adults. So depending on the product that you're using, uh, it can have those adverse effects. And lastly is deworming. It's still pretty common that I'll see guys squirting on some Ivamec onto calves at branding time. So these calves, unless they've been on grass already, are not under any sort of parasite burden. Uh, you can only get infected by intestinal parasites if there is grass present. The grass is needed for the, the parasite to complete its life cycle. So if those calves are just moving from dry lot out onto summer pasture, they do not need to be dewormed. Uh, so we just want to be really prudent with our deworming protocols and only using it when absolutely necessary. A couple tricks and tips of things that I see that I wish I didn't see is, is A, making sure that your restraint is is proper that the the people that you're using to catch and restrain those calves are appropriately trained uh, vaccine handling and storage so making sure that you have coolers there keeping those vaccines at the proper temperature usually between three to five degrees celsius is perfect and also noting that once you mix up a modified live vaccine you only have three hours before that vaccine is no longer effective so you need to use all the vaccine up uh, you can't store that stuff and lastly is just injection sites so i still see a lot of vaccines being injected into the calf's armpits uh, just because when you're restraining a calf when it's laying on its side it's an easy point of access but when it comes to beef quality assurance and meat safety we always want all injections to go into the neck of an animal regardless of its age so even baby calves it is harder to get access to the neck area but we just have to always make sure that we are doing all these procedures appropriately okay that's it on branding. I just wanted to fill you guys in on some of my tips and tricks and what it's all about. As always, always talk to your veterinarian about what is exactly best for your herd specifically, and these are not at all general recommendations. It's just kind of the average of what I do. And 
I often consult with clients to get them a specific branding time protocol in place. Okay, that's it.